Thank you. My first cello teacher was Bruno Di Cecco. He was a brilliant cello player, a fantastic performer, and a rather intimidating teacher. And he taught me how to play the cello. He showed me how to hold the cello, showed me how to hold the bow, taught me to play scales and arpeggios and etudes and everything I needed to know. And I did my best in those lessons. I wanted to impress Mr. Di Cecco, but like all beginners, I made those unexpected unfortunate sounds that every beginner string player makes. And, uh, and when I did this, Mr. DiCecco was most displeased. But I wasn't. I mean, I wanted to impress the man, but I love those sounds. And while I tried to play accurately and beautifully in lessons, when I went home to practice, I would spend hours trying to recreate those sounds. I thought it was amazing. I wanted to be able to pull those sounds up on command and find what other incredible noises there were to be had on this instrument. Eventually, eventually I, I quit playing cello. I thought this really wasn't for me. I was loving music more than ever. I was listening to the radio very intently. I was buying records, but there was a big disconnect between the music that I loved to listen to and the music that I was expected to play in lessons. So I thought this was, this was over. And then a short time after that, a friend of mine asked me if I wanted to join his band. A band, yes, I wanted to join his band, and I said, absolutely, count me in. And then came some questions. Could I improvise? Could I read charts? Could I sing harmonies? Could I, uh, could I write songs? And I said, yes. I hadn't done any of those things, but I figured, <laughs> I figured I could learn. You know, other people could do it, I could do it. So I joined, and I got off to a shaky start, but I did, uh, I did eventually learn to do all of those things, and I even wrote some songs. Looking for a compass that will point magnetic west Left boot on my right foot, I can't find a matching vest Mama don't know nothing and father don't know best I'm in a state of turmoil, upheaval and unrest Searching for volcanoes to blow off a little steam I've got some real good coffee, I just need a little cream If you don't know where you're going, you don't know where you've been It all can seem so seamless until you spot the seam Geography Geography If you don't know what you're looking at, you don't know what you see just a simple case of geography. At some point, I bought a four-track recording machine. It was just a basic, simple cassette recorder. Nothing too fancy, easy to operate. But to me, it was like magic, because I could layer sound upon sound upon sound, and there seemed to be no end to the fun there was to be had. I used my voice and other instrument, but mostly cello, because cello was really just where it's at for me. And uh, I would make pretty sounds, and I would make these strange dissonant sounds and funny noises. I always loved those funny noises. And um, it was just amazing. And uh, at some point, I realized I needed to find a way to incorporate uh, that kind of multi-layered sound into a live performance. So I got a pickup for my cello, and uh, eventually I picked up this electric cello, and I went looking for some pedals that did different things with sound, and the first one I found was this digital delay, which makes notes echo. The theme of today's talks is pulse, 
and to my ears, nothing better exemplifies a pulse than a simple repeating note. It's also a perfect launch pad for an improvisation. When I was very young, my brother used to tease me a lot. He'd come in when I was practicing and say, haven't you finished sawing through that thing yet? And uh, some years later, he came to one of my concerts, and he seemed genuinely impressed. We spoke afterward, and he said to me in all earnestness, how did you know? And I said, how did I know what? And he said, how did you know you'd ever get any good at that thing? And, uh, <laughs> I told him that I didn't know, I had no idea, and I didn't really think about it that much. I didn't think about how good I was or how good I would get. I just knew that I wanted to do it. I felt compelled to play, and I enjoyed it for the most part. Not every day, but generally I've enjoyed it. And I figured that the better I got, the more I would enjoy it. And there was just some merit to sticking to it. I enjoy music on a lot of different levels. It's a, it's a it's an art and a science. There's a whole geeky mathematical side to it that appeals to one side of my brain. There's all the numbers that go into rhythms and creating uh, you know, harmonies, the way different notes work at different frequencies and how they combine to make pleasing sounds or crashing dissonances. But music is also an art. It's an expression of human emotion. And I sometimes feel like I can express my feelings more eloquently with a single note than I can with any number of words. I love playing the cello. This is for me. This is, uh, it's not my intent to turn all of you into cello players or even cello enthusiasts, though that would be nice. But uh, I just feel like there's, there's something to be said for finding something you love to do and to keep at it. I would encourage all of you to find that thing that you just love to do and do it every day and one day you will saw through that thing.
Thank you. Thank you.